Hi, everybody. Stephanie Kraft here. I'm just going to share a quick video today, and I apologize for the blurriness of the camera. I don't know why it's being like that today, and I can't fix it. So it's we're just going to have to have a blurry video today. Um, so this, this story is about an out-of-body experience that I had with um, a consciousness that was outside of myself. So, um, basically I was waking up one morning and before full wakefulness, I had an experience where my consciousness was now in, um, a grander, vaster being or consciousness that was not me or in me. And it was flying above the earth, flying above the city. And it said to itself, it asked itself, um, which one am I being again? Because it knew it had to return to the body to animate the body, to be in the body um, because that person was going to be waking up soon. And that person was me. And so when that big eye was uh, flying above the earth, scanning and, and getting ready to come back into the body, it, it was inhabiting it, it, it just asked itself, which one am I being again? And then when it remembered the lady that it was being, it said, oh yeah, that lady, Stephanie Kraft. And when it remembered Stephanie Kraft, the whole essence of her um, came to that being. And like the totality of who I am in this life came into that consciousness and it said, oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm being that one again. And um, then it came, it flew back <laughs> and into my body to fill up my body with its energy. And, and then I woke up and it was very interesting to experience consciousness that had nothing to do with Stephanie Kraft. That consciousness was I couldn't describe it actually to you very well because um, I I didn't grasp the totality of who that was <laughs> when I was being that uh, or I wasn't being that, but um, my consciousness was in that grander, bigger I, which had nothing to do with this being. So anyway, that was the experience. And I think it's interesting to... Uh, evaluated in a way or to know that we are not this that this body personality person being is so temporary it is just a role it is just an experience that is the all that is is opportunity to experience a very particular um, essence, you know, that my unique essence, this personality, this body, this being that I'm being, that I'm being in this lifetime is not really I, and it's not really, it's definitely not permanent. And it's, somewhat of an illusion, although the experience is real. It's that we are all here in a unique expression to participate in roles in the play of life on planet Earth. And I suppose knowing this can help someone take themselves less seriously um, and maybe get from the experience the most that they can, almost pulling yourself back into the observer role of who am I being in this life? What am I, what is my essence? And what am I here to, to do or be or experience? So I can't say that my out of body experience and my consciousness being in the big eye, which was completely separate from this being, I can't say that I grasped a whole lot 
about who I'm supposed to be being, but because that experience was so fast, but it is to show that this is not the totality of who we are. This is like a very temporary fleeting experience that I don't think we can understand why we're doing it, but it's definitely not us being who we are in the totality. And I think that who we are is so much bigger than than our minds could ever grasp. And honestly, that leads me to another experience that I once had, which I was not even going to talk about in this video. But why not? Because it's it this one is so interesting um, that it took me one year to for my consciousness to expand enough to conceptualize and grasp. So basically this happened in 2009 or seven or eight. I think it was two, I think it was 2007. It was 2007 for sure. I know exactly the timing. So in 2007, I had this question and the question was because I had re I had seen the I had the book called the raw material R A and I've seen it with the A with the line over it so it might be pronounced Ray but nobody pronounces it that way even though I think it might it's supposed to be pronounced Ray but we call it raw so the raw material and it was book number one the law of one and. When I saw the word raw, R-A, it kind of shook me to my core. Like I knew that, like the that being or that word, or I was that, or it, it was a soul level recognition that was so deep and profound. And so I was having a life between lives hypnotherapy session with my colleague. And so we did exchanges on each other. I did one for her and she did one for me. And this was my turn. And we, you know, because I was the client in this one, I wrote down my questions. And one of my questions was, am I a part of Ra? So I saw Ra as being what we all know it to be as the sun god, right? An Egyptian god. And I felt like that was a soul. And I felt like if I have this much recognition at the core of my being, just by seeing the word on the cover of the book, I thought, well, maybe my fractal, my portion of me of my soul was part of that grander soul and that I'm just one portion in this incarnation that comes from that bigger soul. That's what I felt like might be why I'm having this resonance. Well, she asked my question, I'm under hypnosis lying down. She comes to that question and she's, and I'm channeling my soul. Now I'm not speaking as Stephanie at this time. My soul is channeling through me. And she asks the question, is Stephanie part of Ra or Ray, the sun god, right? And this, my soul just Im quickly, Im you know, speaks through me without my interference or consciousness involved at all. Although I'm, I'm paying attention, I'm listening. And it says, Ra is part of me. Ra is part of me. And I couldn't comprehend it in the moment. And I couldn't comprehend it for one year. 
Because in my mind, if Ra is part of my soul, me, the one speaking through me, who I'm tuned into now as my soul for the session, then my soul or I am so much bigger than I could fathom because I was thinking, well, maybe I'm a little fractal portion of that soul that's living in incarnation as Stephanie, but may have come from that bigger. But for my mind to be able to wrap around this concept of that soul, the raw soul being part of a bigger something, honestly, it took a year for my mind, my consciousness to expand enough to grasp that idea because I couldn't for a while. I was like, wait, if, if that's part of me, then I'm so much bigger, not me, but that my soul. And, um, you know, I don't know why it took me a year for my consciousness or my mind to stretch that much, but I had only had my spiritual awakening in the year 2000. And this happened in 2007. So, you know, it can take some time to get concepts and to, for our consciousness to expand, but that's how long it took for me to be like, oh, I'm that, I'm, my soul is that vast, you know, that's kind of big. <laughs> anyway, I don't walk around thinking that anymore. I just had to process it back then. And now I'm back to being like, just me. <laughs> which is what we're really meant to be doing. I think when we're living a life as someone here we are, I don't think that we're supposed to be necessarily walking around like with these, this grandiose idea of being so huge because we're having, um, uh, you know, we want to be grounded in our lives as I want to be grounded in my life at Stephanie Craft and doing what I'm supposed to be doing in this life, which we can, none of us can ever barely figure out what that is from, on a day-to-day -day basis anyway. But anyway, those are two experiences that I had of a vastness of a consciousness that's so much bigger than what's in this body. So anyway, we are all of that, aren't we? We're all of that. <laughs> I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.